With Terminal Services on Windows Server 2008, Microsoft have added the feature Remote App. Using Remote App allows a user to access an application on a server without the need for a virtual desktop. As shown here, previously, using Terminal Services, an end user would first need to open up a connection to a terminal server. The terminal server would then create a desktop for the end user. The user then could open the application using the virtual desktop. As you can see, the user now has two start menus, one on the server and one on the local computer. The user can switch between applications on the local computer or between the remote desktop. Running multiple desktops can confuse the end user and uses more RAM and CPU than needed as each user that is connected to terminal server must have a complete desktop. Remote App allows an end user to launch an application on a terminal server without the need for a virtual desktop and will appear as if it is running on the local computer. As you can see here, the end user has one start menu and can swap between the remote application the same way they would any other local application. From the end user's point of view, the application appears to be the same as any other application running on the local computer. Before you can use Remote App on your terminal server, you need to install some applications to provide to the end user. When you install an application on terminal services, you need to make sure that your terminal server is in install mode. When terminal services is in install mode, it will capture any registry or any changes made during the install. These changes are saved to a master copy. When a new user logs into terminal services, these changes are saved to the user's profile. This allows terminal services to provide each user with their own user settings. If you install programs in execute mode, the settings for the program may run in an unpredictable way when multiple users access your server. To change from execute mode to install mode, run the command change user slash install from the command prompt. Once you have finished installing the software and making any other required changes, change back to execute mode by running the command change user slash execute. Keep in mind that while in install mode, you can make changes to your application. For example, if you wanted to change registry or any file locations, create custom settings for that application, you could do this after you finish installing the application and while still in install mode. In other words, you could install your application, run it and make changes like setting all the default paths in the program, exit the application and then change to execute mode. When the settings are copied to the user, they will have the updated settings saving you making changes for each new user. If you don't want to do it from the command prompt, Windows also provides a wizard to make the process of installing software easier. The wizard is found in the control panel and is called install application on terminal server. Let's have a look how to install an application on terminal services and make it available to the end user. First of all, open the control panel and select programs. From here, you can see the option install application on terminal server. From the wizard, browse to the location for the setup program for your software. If it does not appear, you may need to select the option All Files from the pull-down menu. Windows Server 2008 will automatically switch to install mode before the setup program is run. From here, install the program as you would normally on a non-terminal server, knowing that any changes to the any file or registry will be correctly captured. If you wish to make any more changes while in install mode, Make your changes before you press finish on the install software wizard. Now that I have the application installed on my terminal server, I can make it available to the end users. To do this, run TS Remote App Manager from Terminal Services found in Administrative Tools. From here, select the option Add Remote App from the left hand side in the Actions pane. From the wizard, you can select from the list the application that you want to make available. The Word Viewer application that I just installed is not available in the list so I must press the Browse button to locate the executable for the application. The program will be added to the list and now I can complete the wizard. Scrolling to the bottom of the admin tool, you will notice that WordView is now available as a remote application on the terminal server. Now that the application is available on the server, I need to make it available on the client computer. To do this, you can either make an RDP file or a Windows install package. The RDP file can be copied to the client and run from the client. The Windows Installer Package, or MSI Package, can be deployed to the client via Group Policy or run and installed from the client. To create an RDP file for the application, select the application and select the option Create RDP File. From the RDP Wizard, you can select a few options like the server to use, 
Gateway and Certificate settings. I am going to leave these on the defaults. Finish the wizard and the RDP file is now created. If you want to create an MSI package, select the option Create Windows Installer Package. Again, you have the same options as the RDP creation wizard. I will just leave these on the defaults. By default, the MSI application will create a shortcut to the application in the Start menu under Remote Programs, but you can change the location if you wish. You can also select the option to create a desktop shortcut. You can also change the default file association for that program to always use the remote application. Keep in mind that if you have the locally installed application for that file association, the local application will no longer be used. Finish the wizard and the MSI application will be created. Both the RDP file and the MSI package have been created in the package programs directory under program files. The RDP file can now be copied to the end user's computer. The MSI package can now be installed on the client's computer or deployed via group policy. Now that you have your RDP file or MSI package, you need to make the application available on your client's computer. With RDP files, you can copy the file to the client computer. You can even make the RDP file available via a network share. On a large network, you can simply copy the RDP file to the client's computer via a login script. If you create an MSI package, you can run the file locally on the client's computer. On a large network, you will want to look at an automated deployment system using Group Policy, or if your company has it, Microsoft System Management Server, or third-party automated software deployment solution. Using Remote App, you can reduce your administration and make it easier to deploy applications to your end users. Let's have a look at Remote App in action. On the Vista client, I have copied the RDP file to the desktop. If I double click the RDP file, you will notice that Microsoft Word Viewer appears on the Vista client just like a normal application. If I look at the drives in the open dialog box, you will notice that these are network shares connected back to the client. This allows the end user to access their files on their local floppy drive, CD-ROM drive and hard drive. The floppy drive, local drive C and CD-ROM drive you can see here is all on the server. If the user attempts to access these, they will be accessing devices on the server. This can confuse the end user. You may need to educate your users about this change. I have also installed the Word Viewer on the local computer. If I run this as well, you can see the remote app appears to be just another application running on the local computer. You will also notice that the Windows title bars are different. This is most noticeable with the Minimize, Maximize and Close buttons. With Remote App, I can cut and paste between applications running locally and applications running on the server. Besides a few differences, when set up correctly, the end user will not notice the difference between locally running applications and applications running on the terminal server. Terminal Services Web Access allows an end user to access remote applications through their web browser. In reality, the TS Web Access page only provides another method to launch the RDP client. This means when your users use the TS Web Access, they must have RDP Client 6.1 installed. This is available in Windows Server 2008, Windows Vista with Service Pack 1, and Windows XP with Service Pack 3. To install TS Web Access, all you need to do is add TS Web Access component to your terminal server. The TS Web Access role does require ISS to be installed as well, but the wizard will automatically install this for you if it is not already installed. Let's go through installing the TS Web Access role. To add the role, launch Server Manager from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. Since Terminal Services is already installed on this server, I must add the TS Web Access service by scrolling down to Terminal Services and selecting the component Add Role Services. Now it's just a simple matter of selecting TS Web Access. The wizard will detect that ISS is not installed on this server and prompt you to add it to the installation. I will just go ahead and accept the default options for the ISS install. There are no additional options for the TS Web Access. That's it, TS Web Access is installed and ready to go. Now that TS Web Access has been installed on the server, clients can access it using the URL of the server slash TS. If the server has been configured with a certificate, you can use HTTPS to make a secure connection. When you access the web server, this provides access to remote applications set up on that server. You can, however, have the web access component 
provide access to remote applications on another server. If you desire, you can install TS Web Access Component on a server that does not have terminal services installed on it. This server passes the user through to the terminal server. Before the server will do this, you need to make a small configuration change to the server to point it to the new terminal server. This is done by connecting up to the URL with an administrator's account and selecting the configuration tab. Once this is done, you also need to give access to the TS Web Access component to the terminal server. To do this, you need to add the TS Web Access account to the TS Web Access group on the terminal server. Let's have a look how to configure the TS Web Access component and give it access to the terminal server. I have installed TS Web Access component on my web server, which does not have terminal services installed on it. This will provide web access to my users. To allow the web access component to access my terminal server, I need to add the web server to the local group on the terminal server. To do this, I will launch computer management from the local computer and then connect to the terminal server. Select Groups under System Tools. Here you can see the group name, TS Web Access Computers. Now all I need to do is add the web server computer account to this group and the TS Web Access component will be able to access the terminal server. Next all I need to do is configure the TS Web Server component to connect to the terminal server. To do this, open Internet Explorer and go to the URL server name slash TS. As you can see, there are no remote apps in this window because TS Web Access is pointing to the local server. Select the Configuration tab. If you do not see the Configuration tab, you need to add your username to the local group TS Web Access Administrators. Now if I change the server to point to my terminal server and press apply, you will notice that the remote application on the terminal server will now appear. If I open a remote app, you will notice that it functions much the same way as running an RDP file. If I select the application, you will notice that it looks identical as when I previously ran it using the RDP file. This is because the web access simply invokes the client for the user. In other words, web access gives the end user a simple way to launch remote applications. Keep this in mind when deploying TS Web Access. Your end user still needs to have the RDP 6.1 client installed on their local computer. TS Web Access does not provide client access for older operating systems. The addition of Remote App in Windows Server 2008 allows you to provide a lot more functionality to your end users and allows an easier and simpler terminal server experience. With Remote App, you can provide applications to your end user with older computers. These computers may not be able to run these applications as for example they may not have enough RAM. Some applications require access to a local database which may not be suitable to access over a wide area network. Using Remote App allows your users to access remote applications like these with a decent amount of speed and functionality. Also, terminal services allow simple administration which can reduce your costs. Having your installs on a central server reduces the amount of installations you require as the software only needs to be installed on your terminal server. With the addition of Remote App in Windows Server 2008, Terminal Services provides a more complete and functional solution than ever before.